Banachari Amuna Chira Yamuna Chira Banachari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Chana Vallabha Kiri Varadari Gopi Chana Vallabha Chaya Gopi Chana Vallabha Kiri Varadari Yashoda Nandana Praja Chanarandana Yashoda Nandana Yashoda Nandana Praja Chanaranjana Yamuna Te Oda Banachari Yamuna Te Ra Yamuna Chira Banachari Yamuna Chira Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Chaya Radha Madhava Chaya Radha Madhava Kanjabi Hari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Rama, Rama, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.
Chaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Shri Radhe Chaya Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Radha Madhava Shri Radhe Shri Shri Radha Madhava Ke Shila Braupad Ki Nitai Gora Bhrima Nam Ge So Aber uh, does everyone speak English actually? Spricht jeder Englisch? Wer spricht kein Englisch? Kishori Kun natürlich. Aber sonst? Ha? Wer? Kavi spricht kein Englisch. Ah, danke. Ich kann mir nicht vorstellen, dass er spricht doch Englisch. Aha. Du sprichst auch Englisch, ha? Huh? Still learning, yes. <laughs> We are learning. Okay. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, The Status Quo, Chapter 27, Understanding Material Nature, Text 8. Yatrichaya, Yatrichayopa Labdena, Yatrichayopa Labdena, Santushto Mitabun Munihi. Santushto Mita Bun Munihi Vivikta Sharana Shanto Vivikta Sharana Shanto Maitra Karuna Atmavan Maitra Karuna Atmavan Yatricha Yopa Labdena Santushto Mita Bumunihi Vivikta Sharana Shanto Maitra Karuna Atmavan Yatricha Yopa Labdena Santushto Mita Bumunihi Vikta Sharana Shanto Maitra Karuna Atman Atmavan Yatrichaya Without difficulty Upalabdena With what is obtained Santushta Satisfied Mita Lipte Book Eating Munihi Thoughtful Vivikta Sharanaha Living in a secluded place. Shantaha. Peaceful. Maitra. Friendly. Karunaha. Compassionate. Atmavan. Self possessed. Or self realized. Both. It means self possessed and self realized. So, translation For his income, a devotee should be satisfied with what he earns without great difficulty. He should not eat more than what is necessary. He should live in a secluded place and always be thoughtful, peaceful, friendly, compassionate, and self-realized. 
So here in this part of the Bhagavatam, before I read from the purport, is a description of a saintly person, a sadhu. Yeah? And uh, what are his qualities and what are his... Yeah, what are the qualities of a spiritual person, sadhu? And this is very important to know because we want to be spiritual. So we know what we have to, which qualities we have to develop. Yeah, so it's a process, it's a spiritual process. We are very eager to improve ourselves. Right? It's not coming by accident. Yeah? So human life is a life of improvement. Material society improves on the not in the wrong place, but if it's only in the material se uh, sense, uh, improvement, uh, as humanity is striving for, always to improve, but only in the material, then it's a, a wrong um, use of this uh, urge to improve. The right improvement is to work on ourselves. So we, we hear here about very important qualities which we have to develop. Purport. Everyone who has accepted a material body must maintain the necessities of the body by acting or earning some livelihood. A devotee should only work for such income as is absolutely necessary. He should be satisfied always with such income and should not endeavor to earn more and more and simply to accumulate the unnecessary. A person in a conditioned state who has no money is always found working very hard to earn some with the object of lording it over mature nature. Kapiladev instructs that we should not endeavor hard for things which may come automatically without extraneous labor. The exact word used in this connec connection, yadrichaya, means that every living entity has a predestined happiness and distress in his present body. This is called the law of karma. It is not possible that simply by endeavors to accumulate more money a person will be able to do so. Otherwise, almost everyone would be on the same level of wealth. In reality, Everyone is earning and acquiring according to his predestined karma. According to the Bhagavatam conclusion, we are sometimes faced with dangerous or miserable conditions without endeavoring for them. And similarly, we may have prosperous conditions without endeavoring for them. We advise to let these things come as predestined. We should engage our valuable time in prosecuting Krishna consciousness. In other words, one should be satisfied by his natural condition. If by predestination one is put into a certain condition of life which is not very prosperous in comparison to another's position, one should not be disturbed. He should simply try to utilize his valuable time to advance in Krishna consciousness. Advancement in Krishna consciousness does not depend on any materially prosperous or distressed condition. It is free from the conditions imposed by material life. A very poor man can execute Krishna consciousness as effectively as a very rich man. One should therefore be very satisfied with his position as offered by the Lord. Okay, so this purple is a bit long. We have still as much to go as I read so far. So Prabhupada explains about these qualities. And the first quality is Yadrichayo Palabdena, yeah? Santushto. So, and he says this word, yatricha, it's a very interesting word. Sometimes Prabhupada translates it as automatically. Yeah, that some things come by themselves, yeah, by themselves. So Prabhupada says here, actually, it means according to the karma. It's not understood how, they, mm, sometimes it's not understood how they come, but they come automatically. So he had said this, yatricha, yeah, Prabhupada says also without difficulty, um, we should be satisfied with that what comes by itself. Yeah? And uh, this is actually what a devotee, especially Krihasta devotee, should understand this principle. That m th even though I'm a Krihasta, even though I have to um, have need money, I need money, I should only you know, have as much money as I need for my necessities and I should not strive for more. I should not strive for more. We are devotees. We are not here to become rich and powerful and uh, very successful in the material world. This is complete <laughs> waste of energy because we'll have nothing uh, from this. We will not gain anything. It's temporary. What's the use of it? A devotee thinks in terms of eternity. This is so he, the Grihastha devotee depends on Krishna, works as much as he needs to work, and the rest of the time and energy is put into Krishna. 
if you are very rich, if you are having a high position in the world, okay, you have it already, but you don't have to strive for it. Doesn't mean that if a Krihasta devotee who has a, a job where he earns a lot or he lives in a big house or has many cars or whatever, has to give it up, not necessarily. He can use it for Krishna. But if you don't have it, you don't have to strive for it. Devotee should be satisfied. This is what I got in this life, kind of my, my karma. Live in a big house, small house, but it's okay. I have what I need, and I chant Hare Krishna. Yeah. So this is what Prabhupada says here. And then he says also that the things anyway come by themselves. Yeah. And one principle of uh, Bhakti Yoga is called Prayasa. Rupa Goswami explains. Prayasa means it's striving what for what is very difficult to attain. And this is bad for bhakti. Bhakti vinashyati. It destroys bhakti actually. If we strive for things, material things, which are very difficult to attain, it destroys our bhakti, he says. Yeah, so, yeah, this is actually a very nice um, uh, point to make us a little bit more relaxed. It's okay, whatever I have, this is my karma. I don't have to look always to the neighbor. Oh my God, he has such a nice car and house. And Actually, I'm doing that. <laughs> I drive every day to my flat next to all these big Bavarian houses. And Why don't I have such a house? <laughs> I hope very soon big inflation comes and the house bubble will crash. And then we'll I will buy his house. <laughs> then I can afford it. Why don't devotees live in such houses? But actually, there is a point even in the Bhagavatam where Parikshit says, why do the worshippers of Shiva, who has nothing, have so much? And why do the worshippers of Krishna, who has so much, have nothing? <laughs> huh? Obvious. Yes, he takes everything away. And Prabhupada even says that, actually, there's a verse in the Bhagavatam, if Krishna loves you, he will take everything away. Prabhupada says, if Krishna loves you, he will take it away. Yeah? So that you are not in taint. Yes. So, yeah, we shouldn't be enamored by the material opulences. Not at all. See through. It's temporary. Yeah. It's not. Prabhupada was not. Prabhupada could have have could have had so many reasons for being ecstatic. Oh, I was preaching. So many people come. So much money. Oh, I'm driving down the Rolls Royce all the time. Wow, it's great. Wonderful. So much money I have. He was super detached, right? He was for Krishna, not for himself. Yeah. So he was not, 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 yeah, not impressed. This was one of the interesting qualities of Prabhupada. He was not impressed at all by any opulence, by any big person who was sitting in front of him. Big people sat in front of Prabhupada. Prabhupada met the Prime Minister of India at that time, Shastri, what is it, Babu Shastri Lal. He met um, very rich people in the West. He met the, the, the mayor of Paris who gave him a big reception in the ho town hall of Paris, which was very opulent. And Prabhupada was never impressed. He was like, oh, wow, I, have to, I meet the mayor of Paris. Oh, he's the mayor. Oh, he, oh, this. he came as the Acharya. <laughs> it's amazing, actually. He was not impressed. He said, actually, they should be impressed by me because I am an ambassador of God. That's the highest position, right? So we cannot imitate that because we are still bewildered. Yeah? Sometimes, oh, a big person wants to meet me or see me or talk with me and or some ISKCON representative can meet me. Oh, that's oh so we have to uh, take care of this. And all. No, if the mayor of Leipzig calls you, you're impressed. You're probably impressed. Be honest. You will be impressed. Oh, it's the mayor of Leipzig. not impressed. Of course, we cannot imitate that and be, be the Acharya. Hmm? I am temple president of Iskand Leipzig. Yes, how can, wha what can I do for you? Ah, you off offer this at that land? No, it's not acceptable. We want to have in center. <laughs> Prabhupada said, we need place in the center. <laughs> Breitscheidplatz, huh? Gedächtniskirche. Yes, get this as a temple. <laughs> you won't go to your feet. So, Okay, so we should be satisfied what comes and we should really understand we want to be devotees of Krishna and we, w we are blessed that we have time and energy to, to worship Krishna and connect with him and get to know him and uh, get the higher taste. And then what's the use of 
material opulences. Material opulences, yeah. Insignificant. Huh? Said samsara vasana tucha vat. The, the, the samsara vasana. Vasana means like impressions of our samsara, of our e existence in the material world, shall become insignificant. Tucha. Tucha means insignificant. When will the day come when all these samsara vasanas are completely insignificant for me? Yeah, this is what a devotee wants. So another word here is mita book. This means that one should eat only as much as necessary to maintain the body and soul together. One should not be glutinous to satisfy the tongue. Grains, fruits, milk and similar foods are allotted for human consumption. One should not be excessively eager to satisfy the tongue and eat that which is not meant for humanity. Particularly, a devotee should eat only prasad or food which is offered to the pers personality of Godhead. This is an important point. It's super, super important. And we should preach that also to people. Eat prasadam. And it's not that easy. We are used to it, right? We are o always offering. Sometimes it's impractical. Sometimes you don't want. Sometimes you're hungry. Sometimes the offering goes a bit fast. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Maybe not so much devotional, but still we do it. We know we can only eat what is prasadam. And we do it. And many people don't do that. And they eat verily sin, it's said. So we should explain to the people, you should eat prasadam, offer it, learn it, even though you don't like to. It's a moderation, but you will get devotion. Sometimes we offer and we get devotion. Sometimes you really have, oh, it's for Krishna, please accept it, my Lord. And you have devotional feelings during the offering. This is why we should do it, to become devotees. His position is to accept the remnants of those foodstuffs, innocent foods like grains, vegetables, fruits, flowers, oh flowers, and milk for <laughs> flowers. <laughs> There's some flowers we can eat, right? Gänseblümchen. Yeah, very tasty. I've offered to the Lord, and therefore there is no scope for offering foods which are in the mode of passionate ignorance. A devotee should not be greedy. Okay, this is then the next quality, greedy. So, Santushto Muta Mita Buk Mita Bun Munihi Vivikta Sharana Shanto Maitra Karuna Atmavan. Which is then the greedy? Okay, let's see what the other says here. Okay, general, we should not be greedy. It is also recommended that the devotee should be Muni or thoughtful. He should always think of Krishna and how to render better service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We should be munis. Muni means one who thinks. And he thinks, how can I do better service to Krishna? How can I do better service to Krishna? How can I improve my service? How can I improve my <coughs> chapa, my, my, my study? How can I yeah, uh, think about Krishna? Yeah, we should think about that. Why are we doing that? When have you last time thought, how can I improve my service? Should not oh, I thought about it. no maybe last month or something so it's okay no actually should every day how can I improve my service the materialist here always thinks about it how can I get more money how can I be more successful the high achievers not the regular worker who you know like a robot goes to work you know with his stempelkarte and then every all day long he does like that and goes home. No, I mean high achievers who really think, how can I be really successful? How can I build a big company? How can I become a millionaire in one year and then double it in the next? How can I and be very influential? Like high achievers, they are perfecting their life towards their goal. They're submitting, they surrender to their goal. And there are people like that. Because they have a very important goal. I want to be so rich and powerful and my business and my influence. How can I have thousands of mm, followers online? We should be high achievers for Krishna. We have the highest goal. Paramgati. Isn't it called? Paramgati. Highest goal. So we should think, how can I perfect my life, my spiritual life? My chapa, my reading, uh, my sadhana. In general, my sadhana. We are sadhakas. A sadhaka tries to make his sadhana better. 
Where is my sadhana not good? You have to ask first, where is my sadhana not good? It starts with rising in the morning. Is this acceptable to rise at that time what I'm used to rise? How is my chapa? Hmm, how, is my, how much am I reading? How much am I preaching? How many realizations do I have? How much am I praying? How is my bhakti developing? This is what we should be thoughtful of. Or temple president, how should the temple develop? Which areas should get improvement? Or the pucharya, wha wha what can be done better for the Lord in offering? Or the cook, this also. Huh? My service, as Prabhupada says, how can I improve my service? And we'll be, we'll be very happy. We should be high achievers for Krishna. Or the book distributor, isn't it? He has to think, how can I distribute more books? How can I distribute more books? Like this, there's one devotee, I don't know if you know it, maybe you don't know it, because now this book distribution is not so much in the forefront of the ISKCON media anymore <laughs> as before, before that everyone would know it. Every devotee would know that before, because book distribution was like the thing. There was one devotee who recently broke the record, recently, of the most books distributed on one day which was unthinkable because these were things from the past, we thought, like from a different age. When you think about the old age of the great book distributors, yeah, there it was possible, Harinamananda and Rohini Sutra, Manita, whatever, right? So, but nowadays, this is, this, was, this is long time gone, isn't it? So this devotee, Mahotsaha is his name, he distributed thousand books on one day. And then he thought, hmm, I broke the record. Let's, because his guru is Bhakti Yukash Maharaj, and he will come very soon here. And then he told him, records are therefore breaking. So it means records should be broken. And he said, okay, I will break my own record. Okay. And then he's distributed 2,000 books. And because he should break his record, he did it again and distributed now 3,000 books. And one day, he did not even know it. See, you have to know that. <laughs> yes, really. There's even a podcast online where he tells how he did it. Brahmach he's an Indian-bodied brahmachari living in America. And he did it with Bhagavatam sets. A set, uh, this is the small set with 40 books. And he just distributed that. So many of that that there are 3,000 books. And he got proper Lakshmi for that. They were not subsidized, sponsored books. Free books, who wants? No. He got for every set, whatever, 100 euros, 200, whatever he, dollars that he needs to get. 3,000 books. Yeah, and you should listen to this podcast. It's not just for book distributors interesting. It's for any devotee interesting to see how we can improve, how we can do the impossible. Because we are devotees, we have service, and nothing is impossible. This was, isn't it, Prabhupada said, impossible is the word in the full dictionary. We always hear that and laugh, ha, 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 very nice. Yeah, but actually Prabhupada was not saying it as a joke. <laughs> actually Prabhupada said to chastise the devotees to do the impossible. And some devotees take that serious. And they do it. They say, yeah, when Prabhupada says impossible, whatever you think is impossible, is not impossible because the Lord is able to do the impossible, then I can do anything. Anything. But why am I not do anything? Because I don't want. And this Mahotsa, he just said himself, told himself, I want to distribute that many books. And he worked himself up there and he did it. Krishna empowered him. Krishna Shakti Vina Naya Tara Pravartan. Only with Krishna Shakti you can do this. Krishna empowers. But we are lazy in the mind. We are not Muni. We are lazy in the mind. Meaning we don't think, we don't think, what to speak about, think big. Prabhupada said, think big and do it. But we don't think. So if we don't even think, how we can think big? Yeah. So it means we should think, okay, how can I improve my service? How can I do it better? How can I offer something to Krishna, to something amazing? Pr pr please, Krishna. But it doesn't happen by itself. Okay, here Prabhupada says, yat richa, yeah. But it's, this is in connection to the material things. We talk about spiritual. Prabhupada said, think big and do it. Okay, I want this for Krishna. I want to do this for Krishna. How can I do it? And I act accordingly.
Yeah. 3,000 books. I think it's something... Who, who can do that? Who can do that? Anyone can do that. Because this devotee, he's not like, you think, wow, he's like Maharati. He, he's like a regular brahmachari, you know? Ka not Nothing special what you think, wow, like a superhero book distributor. He's just, as we say, really fired up. <laughs> he's really fired up. So this is another thing what we need for bhakti. Enthusiasm. Utsahan. We should be fired up. Inspired. Enthusiastic. Yes. Nice. I can serve Krishna. I can do something for him. Oh, uh, let me do that. We should be enthusiastic. Find something we want to offer to him and do it. Yeah. So think about it. What can I do for Krishna? As a temple president, you have so many things. Two, two temple presidents in a row. I have two in a row here. <laughs> two in a row. Not bad. <laughs> So think, what can I do for Krishna? Yeah. Or as a, as, as a father, we can think, how can I make my child a pure devotee, a great devotee, who, who will be do amazing things? How can I do that? Or on the vid individual base, how can I become a pure devotee? Fast. How can I be a pure devotee? But we're lazy. We don't care. We don't want. We're satisfied with status quo. Of course, status quo is also good. Prabhupada said, at least maintain what I have given you. Okay. But if someone feels the urge, no, actually, more would be nice. No problem. The sky is the limit, as they say. Huh? The sky is the limit. There is no limit. This is that's what I'm speaking now. I would not speak that because I'm now more moderate devotee. I would have spoken that maybe 10 years ago like that. <laughs> now I'm actually more moderate. But because this the only is with 3,000 books, are you saying this is crazy? This is just crazy. This, thi when I heard all that, he, this was kicking in my wonderful sitting uh, function <laughs> organ of my body. Really, I said, my God, you just 3,000 books? I'm so, I said, I'm so lazy. I do nothing. I do nothing. My God. He's so determined and eager, right? And I think, ah, yeah, he's, you know, I was also like that. You have your times in life, right? When you're a brahmachari, you're fired up, you do incredible things. I was also on travel, I distribute many books. Yes, yes, maybe not 3,000, but yeah, and just, uh, you know, a couple of, let, let's see what he will do in a couple of years, you know. <laughs> but this is just the mind, you know, putting it down again, no? Yeah, so... Amazing things can be done. And Prabhupada was pushing that. So, yeah, let's think what we can do wonderful for Krishna. Yeah. For, or li let's say, like, or in, in cooking also, you can think, how can I cook a wonderful prasadam like that? I, uh, we were talking two days ago, I think, yeah, when we talk about old times in Berlin. Actually, now it's interesting to come to that point. We had three devotees then in this one temple in the Schönacher Straße, in Lethe. And they tried to outdo, because we're Chaganat, we have big Chaganat there, and Chaganat, of course, likes to eat. And they tried to out, actually there were more, but three in particular, remember, they tried to outdo the previous cook, the day of the, the, the cook of the previous day, and they tried to cook something better. Right? It, it was kind of like that. And then they, we had every day the most amazing prasadam. I think I never had better prasadam because they really put their heart and soul and energy and time into it. They studied the cookbook. Yeah, they studied the cookbook. They were not just doing the regular thing, okay, what we have and put inside and put, put, put. No, okay, what can I do? Uh, how can I do it better? And that was, it was too much actually. Every day there were cakes, where every day almost, like uh, uh, cooked cakes also, every day. But it was a small temple, right? It was possible for they, they more or less cooked for the brahmacharis, huh? <laughs> you can say like that. So, but still, the, the mentality was nice to make something beautiful, and it was really beautiful, beautiful for Chakanat. So, uh, yeah. Okay, let's continue. That should be, uh -huh, okay. It is recommended that a devotee should be moony or thoughtful. He should always think, always think of Krishna and how to render better service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
That should be his only anxiety. I was not continuing the prayer, but this should be his only anxiety. How can I do better? Was it good enough? And yeah, I remember when I was in book distribution, I had kind of this anxiety. Oh, can I do more books? And when there was a day when I was not doing well, I was sometimes very frustrated. It was, m I don't know, this was probably more the ego. I actually remember one day, now that Brad Kishore is here, one day uh, was my first day in one particular marathon in Nuremberg, and I wanted to distribute many books, maybe 3,000 books. <laughs> huh? Yes, 3,000 books. No, I don't, I don't just many, maybe not 3,000. And the first day in marathon, super inspired, went out so many hours in Nuremberg, and it didn't work. It didn't work. The books were not going out. I was struggling. It was very difficult. And in the evening, I came back to the van, and at that time, we called the temple president, or he called us, how are you doing? And I remember, I don't know if you remember that, but I remember it. I remember it clearly. <laughs> and then we talked on the phone, and then and she said, how was it? And I said, ah, it was terrible. It didn't work, and I'm frustrated. I couldn't achieve my result, and it was very, very difficult. And you said, yeah, it's not so bad. Tomorrow will be better. Just be detached. It's a test. Well, how you, <laughs> how you um, motivate a broken Sankirtan devotee? <laughs> how you, you know... Uh, 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 how do you say, give, soothe the broken Brahmachari Sangha devotee's heart, you know, soothing words of the temple president. <laughs> <laughs> and then you asked, uh, by the way, how many books you distribute actually? I said 99 or 95 or something like this. And you said, what? You are crazy. 90 books, it's great, it's good. Uh, yeah. But it was not for me because I want to do more. I had a different mind, uh, goal in mind. So, but this is good. This is good. Prabhupada says here, anxiety. You should have anxiety. How can I do better? It should, I think, I was not on a spiritual platform in this situation. This was more the ego, of course. I want this result in Rajaguna. But it should be in a spiritual sense. Anxiety for Krishna. To do it nicely for Krishna. And sometimes we can see, really, devotees here serving, who say, oh, the flower garland, ah, it was not right, you know, the flower was a little bit down, and ah, they, are n they, are they have anxiety for Krishna. I think, wow, they're amazing. I put it on uh, this, that, and uh, okay. I'm not such an artistic and puchari dressing person, right? So for me, it's like, it's okay, what's the problem, right? But yeah, no, no, it has to be like this. <laughs> yeah, fully absorbed in the one hand. Take it serious. As a materialist, Prabhupada says it now. As a materialist, is always thoughtful about improving his material condition. A devotee's thoughts should always be engaged in improving his condition in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, he should be a Muni. I have not read this purport before. I just read this now. So Prabhupada, yeah, it's exactly the point. Eh? A materialist, a materialist, they are like perfectionist, like high achievers, as I said in sport, in business, in whatever, professional person, right? They are wh why are they professionals? Why are they actually going down in history? Or let's say they go into history. They are written in the history book, some special person who achieved something great. Also in, 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 in literature, who wrote a wonderful masterpiece in literature because they were really working for it. Take it serious. And now he's a uh, Goethe or... Uh, Schiller or Hesse or whatever, they are really celebrated for that because they really did something outstanding in their field. And actually in the conversation between Ramananda Roy and Chaitanya Mahabrabhu, there's also the, the question, who is a famous person? And, and Mahabrabhu, uh, Ramananda Roy says, someone who is a devotee for Krishna, of Krishna, he should be famous or he will be famous. So we should be famous for Krishna. Do something outstanding for Krishna. The next item recommended is that a devotee should live in a secluded place. Generally, a common man is interested in pounds, shillings and pence or materialistic advancement in life, which is unnecessary for a devotee. A devotee should select a place of residence where everyone is interested in devotional service. Generally, therefore, a devotee goes to a sacred place of pilgrimage where devotees live. It is recommended that he live in a place where there is no large number of ordinary men. 
So, for the OTCNs in Hajj Alam, this is what we are doing. Yeah, we are living according to this principle. Yeah. We are not large number of ordinary men. <laughs> yeah, we are not, or- yeah, but we are devotees, devotees. But it's true that the us, it's two times said in nectar of instruction. Asat Sangha, Tyaga and Chana Sangha. Two times. Don't have materialistic association. And then it said, so it's a ch- ch- uh, Chana uh, Sangha Tyagat, and then the other is Chana Sangha. The one thing is called bad if you have association of non devotee, is bad. And the good thing is to give it up. <laughs> Rupa Goswami says. And I can only say I'm really, really happy here to live here in the middle of the nowhere <laughs> because yeah there are no I don't want to see materialists I could not live in our big cities and see all the crazy people sorry to say <laughs> it's, it's crazy the whole atmosphere and how they behave and dress and all that it's influencing we think oh no I'm devotee I'm transcendental no it will influence the inf- association is so powerful so we should be very careful if we ha- want to develop and constant devotional attitude right in the devotee association you can have a constant devotional attitude always krishna 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 i was talking with one devotee at the marriage on the table because he asked something in this regard he is more with non-devotees and how difficult it is and i said yeah there you have to be very careful what to say how to say to not be the weirdo (laughs) and yeah, Robert said, they think we are crazy and we think they are crazy. It's not compatible. <laughs> and then I said, here, with devotees, you run around with a big bag. And no one thinks anything at all. You do this in school, in the town, at your work, they think, you know, why does he have a weird bag? Is it hurt his, his hand? Is it a bandage? Or what is it, you know? Just and all this thinking, this weird thinking, this critical thinking or suspicious thinking, this is an energy, it, and if it's always projected on you, what to speak of running around in the dhoti or in tilak or like you now, a black dot, not even the middle, just somewhere on your head, you know, run around like this in, in the city, they, they look, what's going on with this guy? And I did not even recognize it since one hour and looking at you. Now only now I'm recognizing it. <laughs> Yes, we I don't think about it before. I don't perceive it. <laughs> and I said to him, you are now here with devotees. Stand up and say, Hare Krishna! Everyone looks at him and says, Hare Ball! <laughs> Do that in the middle of the materialists. They will think, oh God, what's that? You know, Hare Akbar! Oh God, you know, he will kill us or whatever, you know. The, uh, it's not compatible with devotees, no problem. That's why it's so wonderful in general, in, in holy places, also in India. But in India in, in general, because culture is still a bit there, some Indians might look at you a little bit, why is it dhoti? And they say, why are you dhoti? You're from the West. <laughs> why? why <are> you <laughs> but in general, people are, c- are kind of open for it. But here it's yeah, difficult. So, ordinary men. It is very important to live in a secluded place, Vivikta Sharana. The next item is Shanta, peaceful. The devotee should not be agitated. He should be satisfied with his natural income, eat only as much as he needs to keep his health, life, live in a secluded place and always remain peaceful. Peace of mind is necessary for prosecuting Krishna consciousness. The next item is Maitra, friendliness. The devotee should be friendly to everyone. But this intimate friendship should be with devotees only. Yeah. Intimate friendship with devotees only. Yeah. Yeah. You have to be very careful as you are. With others he should be official. He may say, Yes, sir, what you say is all right, but he is not intimate with them. A devotee sh- should, however, have compassion for persons who are innocent or who are neither atheistic nor very much advanced in spiritual realization. 
a devotee should be compassionate towards them <coughs> and instruct them as far as possible in making advancement in Krishna consciousness. A devotee should always remain atmavan or situated in his spiritual position. He should not forget that his main concern is to make advancement in spiritual consciousness or Krishna consciousness. And he should not ignorantly identify himself with the body or the mind. Atma means the body or mind. But here the word atmavan especially means that one should be self-possessed. He should always remain in the pure consciousness that he is spirit soul and not the material body or the mind. That will make him progress confidentially in Krishna consciousness. So this was the end of the purport. And what I wanted to say more about um, our paramgati. The more we understand our goal in life, define the goal, you know, having clear understanding of the goal, <coughs> the more we can, we'll be able to be enthusiastic to achieve the goal and define our life accordingly. What should be our goal? I say should be because very often it is not. What should be our goal? Our goal should be Krishna, Krishna Prema, Bhakti, Vrindavan. Obviously, yes. But how much is it really our goal? If this is our goal, we will think, I want that, I need that, that's great, that's wonderful. We always think about it. I want to go to Vrindavan, I want to go there. So, because we don't have clear understanding of this goal, we don't have a clear, uh, we don't have a, a, a desire for that. And desire is what is needed. How much do we, we really want to be Krishna conscious and go to Vrindavan? How to help this out? We have a wonderful way to inspire us to develop this desire. And it's called uh, advertisement, no? Werbung. Because Werbung works like that. When you hear it all the time, you will get inspired to buy it. So we have to hear always about Vrindavan. How wonderful it is. And how wonderful Krishna is. And how wonderful it is there. So I want to speak a bit about Vrindavan. So first, Vrindavan is a forest. Who likes forests? Yes? Who likes to take a walk in the forest? Yes? Everyone likes to go in the forest. It's kind of nice, right? Complete in nature. right? Nice park, nice forest. Sometimes they make kind of forest parks. Right? I'm actually, I grew up in a, a town which is a kind of a, how to call it, in English, like a r r r recreation place, Kurort. No? And they have very nice forests, and they have nice pathways, and nice uh, signs for that, and, and nice trees, and all that. It's very, actually, nice. So now my question is, when do you like to go to the forest? In the winter or in the summer? What is better? Do you like winter? Yes? I, I, I mean, really, winter when there's lots of snow. Or summer? You like more summer? Uh huh. You like both? Exactly. Both is beautiful. Both is beautiful. You cannot really say one is better than the other. If only if you don't like heat or cold. But in general, forest in the winter can be so beautiful. When there's snow on the trees and then when the light comes, the sunlight and glitters, it's like, whoa, it's so beautiful. Especially if you are dressed warm eh? in the snow and there's the untouched snow everywhere. Yeah. Or in the summer when, it's when, the, when the forest smells, when it really smells and all the smell from the trees come out and the birds are there and uh, it's warm. Uh, yeah, it's, it's and, and, and maybe th th you have also some flowers, all that. Very beautiful. So we like that. Vrindavan is the perfection of that. It's the perfection of forest. It's the perfection of nature. And we live, when I said I, li I, I was uh, growing up in this area with this forest and all that, these forests are actually really, really simple. Most of the trees are Nadelbäume. How do you call it in English? <coughs> Fir trees? No, well how is it called? Fir trees are huh? pine trees, right? With the s sticky stuff. Most of them. 
And uh, in general, we don't have so much variety of trees, actually. We don't have so much variety compared to India, compared to actually Vindaran, the spiritual world. There are trees you cannot even imagine. And who likes trees? We all like trees. Trees are nice. Somehow or other, trees are nice. I always like trees. It's very nice. Huh? They are give you some shade. They are tall. You can climb on them. Then, whoa, climbing on trees is cool, right? Yes? And they make air, exactly. Yeah? And, um <coughs> and then you have trees which give fruits. You can eat. Oh, wonderful. So, and we don't have so many of them here. In more, uh, in Asia especially, in India. And as I said, in Rindavan, it's described they are tr the most beautiful trees who smell, who give fruits, who are beautiful and all that. And the forest is full of that. It's so if you like to take a walk through the forest there, you are like amazed. It's just beautiful. And in Rindavan, it said, they are and, and then the animals. Everyone likes birds chirping. You know, some birds, the birds make nice sound. There's a huge variety of birds. They make like a concert. It's a concert. The most beautiful sounds are there. And they look nice. They are colorful and they fly. And the peacock. It's just beautiful and it smells wonderful. All the fragrance of the flowers, of these most amazing flowers, which we don't even know. Sometimes in Shastra there's a list in the Bhagavatam or in other books of the Goswami, there's a list of flowers and trees and there are names you don't even know. Sometimes I, I look it up online what it is to have some clue because we don't have this variety. So wonderful, beautiful. So And then, as I said, seasons. We have seasons and they are all beautiful. They're all beautiful. Winter, summer, uh, autumn, and uh, oh, what I forget? Spring. Yes, and they're all beautiful. And it said in Rindavan there are six seasons. Whoa, six seasons. Two more. Yeah, one is monsoon season, and one is called pre-winter, a dewy season. It's called pre-winter, dewy season. And it's because there's some certain dew on the plants, especially in the morning. Yeah, it's all this little chilly right and you ever ever this and it looks very very beautiful but in Rindavan there is no downside of the seasons what is the downside winter here can be really cold really really cold and this here is not even the coldest it can get somewhere in Russia or in Antarctica it can get until minus 50 60 it's deadly and at the same time there are places which are really really hot and this is deadly too. Huh? Yes, in America, yeah, in the, uh, uh, what's it called? Death Valley, yeah, Death Valley. It's called Death Valley. <laughs> There's tortoise time. Or in India, it's so hot. You cannot stand, th you cannot live there, especially Europeans. They need an AC. <laughs> Without AC, they are ah, dying like flies. So, this is the downside. Or the monsoon season, Ooh, this is tough. It's rain all the time, rain, 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 downside. But in the spiritual world, in Rindavan, you have seasons and there's no downside. As Prabhupada said, he was asked, is there snow in the spiritual world? And actually, Prabhupada didn't like snow. Once they brought Prabhupada, they thought, oh, we show Prabhupada beautiful Switzerland with mountains and snow, and they wanted that to go skiing. No, no, that's not. <laughs> they just wanted to show him. And they brought him to some, I forgot where, huh? St. Moritz. Okay, St. Moritz, one of the real expensive places in Switzerland, in a nice hotel. And they w I think they were going on a gondel up to the mountain. And he looked at all that and he was not impressed. <laughs> and after some days, he said to them, why have you brought me to this white hell? <laughs> didn't like it was cold he was just walking in his uh, hotel in the hallway up and down chant his rounds he didn't want to go outside he didn't like it why have you brought me to this white hell <laughs> it's okay okay probably <laughs> we go somewhere else huh? but they didn't like it. Prabhupada liked in Hawaii Prabhupada said Hawaii is like heavenly planets the fruits the climate is very consistent all the year 25 degree it's not too hot not too cold Prabhupada liked Hawaii a lot but he didn't like Switzerland. <laughs> 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 so, 
So, but spiritual world, six seasons, which are all unique and beautiful, and they have no downside, and in this wonderful nature, and the six seasons, most amazing, can be all at the same time. All at the same time without, uh, how does it, manipulating each other. Like the best of the best of the best. With all the trees, with all the plants, with all the flowers, with all the fruits, with all the animals. And the most wonderful, they have a village there, right? We're known as the village. And there live all the devotees together in this most beautiful atmosphere. And in the center of all that is Krishna. In the center of all that is Krishna. This is the spiritual world. And there's so many information about Vrindavan. And the more we hear about that, the more we understand what it is. And this was just a bit about Vrindavan. Now we can hear about who is living there, who are the devotees, what are they doing, how do they look, how do they behave, how do they interact, what is Krishna doing all day long, how, who are the cowherd boys, who are the gopis, how they, they are the most beautiful, amazing, wonderful persons. They are so wonderful. We glorify our swamis and gurus because they are so pure. Nindadi Shunya, it said. Nindadi Shunya. The pure devotees, Nindadi Shunya Rida Yam Ipsita Sangalaptya, is highly, uh, highly desired. The association of pure devotees is highly desired because his heart is free of all uh, ninda, actually, all, all envy and all greed and all. Is free of all uh, offenses. Pure heart. And we love to have association with pure people. Oh, they are wonderful and they are nice and they, you know, sadhus. They grace us with their association. In, this, in, in Rindavan, they are all sadhus. Yashoda has the purest of the pure hearts, pure love she has. Not just for Krishna, for everyone. Imagine Yashoda Ma would give now a lecture here. We would have her association of. Wow, what is she talking? She's pure devotee. Or oh, Nanda Baba. Imagine, Nanda Baba. And you can speak with them in the spiritual world. It's not that we are just, not just, it's of course wonderful with Krishna, but this is a whole Sangha. And they live together and they talk with each other and they visit each other and all that. And Krishna is in the center. So it's that. Oh, whole Vrindavan, everyone loves Krishna. And the most amazing, amazing, we can go there. Krishna. Prabhupada gave us a ticket to Vrindavan. And there's one lecture of Indra Jumna Maharaj. And at one point, because sometimes it runs in our house, and sometimes the lectures they repeat. And then at one point, he, he describes also Vrindavan. And then he says, What are we doing here? Let's go there. <laughs> I heard this so often. I said, Wow, actually, it's cute. What are we doing here? I think he says, Even this rotten world or bad world, something like that. Let's go there. Yeah, and this is the point we have to hear a lot about Krishna in Vrindavan here from the Bhagavatam here from our Acharyas and then you will think what am I doing here let's go there and then you will not be impressed anymore by the material opulence <coughs> Tuchavat it's insignificant and it's Tesham Alpa what is it called Tesham um, Alpa what is this? Uh, Alpha Palam. It's, uh, these are temporary fruits. Oh, it's temporary. So we cannot become advanced devotees without hearing about Krishna. We cannot just say, oh, material world is bad and this. No, it will not work. We need higher taste. And higher taste comes by hearing about Krishna, how wonderful Vrindavan is, how wonderful Krishna is. I would love to have association with Krishna, see him talk, as Pra Prabhupada says that. See him, talk with him, dance with him, play with him. And Krishna is not judgmental. Who are you? Why, what are you doing here? No, he is so happy if we come. He loves us. Come to my world. Let's play. Let's dance. Let's do something together. Wow, it's such a cool place. To serve Radharani, see Radharani, talk with Radharani, all the gopis, make flower garlands, play, whatever. We it's a wonderful world with wonderful people. So, yeah, so we, we have to hear about Krishna, about Vrindav in Vrindavan, hear about Vrindavan, how it's working, what is there, to develop this desire. And then this, this goes into our chapa, 
you chant Hare Krishna, you remember all that. You don't remember material things. You don't remember any whatever. You remember Krishna and Vrindavan. And, and you, you, you chant in this mood, this devotional attitude. Mm. The success for a devotee depends on his attitude, devotional attitude. Mm. Okay, Hare Krishna. So let's bless each other. And one, one, one little thing I want to just... Uh, according to uh, in regard to blessing each other well wishing i wish that everyone actually one small thing i was on the altar yesterday and i did the arati and sometimes i feel a passion doing arati somehow or other i don't know it's, it's there's no taste or something i said okay i do finish my service and da -da -da -da. but then somehow or other i looked at my singer Dev and i did this i never did this, this before i never did this this before i looked at the singer Dev. And somehow this thought crossed my mind, especially when I looked at his hands. Said, "My dear Lord, I'm worshiping you right now here. Please bless all the devotees with Krishna bhakti, because they were dancing here." And suddenly my passion went away. Kind of the singer they become more clear. I understood he's a person. Somehow or other, there was some mercy flow just by thinking that. I said, Whoa, I was like shocked. Oh. <laughs> Okay, please, Lord, bless the devotees. Yes, that should, this should, as a puchari, should be my prayer. We worship the singer of as a puchari, that he take gives us blessings for the community, for the devotees. And this one thing Adi Purusha said, there's a, a, a statement in Shastra. When you criticize a devotee for his sin or for his bad behavior, you will get 50% of the reaction of his wrong behavior. And when you criticize a devotee for a wrong behavior, what you think he did, but he was not doing it, you will get double the reaction for this activity if it would have happened. You understand? If I say, if, if I say to someone, to to Chetigu Ramananda, he <laughs> I don't know something bad or whatever, huh? <laughs> he ate the frog. <laughs> Ramananda offered the frog to his Sheila and ate it. Can you imagine? And she says, "Really?" I said, "Yes, I know it for sure." But of course, he never did that. And I will get double karmic reaction of offering a frog to a shield and eating it and if he had if he would have done it <laughs> i will we share we share the karmic reaction hmm? so meaning we should not be critical even of the sins of devotees we should be loving forgiving kind and praying to krishna to help them not judging them no? not judging them not being judgmental heavy yeah so that we get all blessed with Krishna Bhakti. That when we chant Hare Krishna tomorrow in the morning, Vrindavan manifests in our heart. Okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Nitai Gaur Premanandi. Ja, ist schon nach neun, wenn ich jetzt nicht.